This, in my opinion, is the simplest way to achieve a binding finish on the raw edges of your knit fabrics without needing extra equipment or a special sewing machine foot. Using binding around the neckline, hem, and armholes can be tricky, but if you follow these simple steps and practice a lot, you get the hang of it in no time. The first thing that you want to do is to measure the neckline, hem, or armhole of the garment that you're working on and make a note of the measurement. I am working on the neckline of this crop top I made last year. Now you're going to cut a strip of fabric that is two inches wide with the same length as what you previously measured. If you're going for a thinner, more sleek look, then you want to cut this strip of fabric to be one and a half inches wide instead of two inches. We're gonna to refer to this piece as the binding strip. Take the binding strip, fold it in half, and put it next to the area that you're binding. To fold a neckline, put the two shoulder seams together and lay it flat like this. To fold an armhole, put the shoulder seam and the side seam together and lay it flat. This way, it will be straight rather than curved, therefore making it easier for you to match it to the binding strip. Next, you're going to cut one and a half inches off of the binding strip. Now you're gonna place the ends of the binding strip right sides together, but diagonally like this. You could just put the ends parallel to each other, but this method is less bulky. Do what feels most comfortable for you. To make things easier for yourself, you could draw a diagonal line that would be your guide to stitch on. Once you're done joining the ends of the binding strip together, cut away the excess fabric. Test to see if it will stretch enough to meet the end of the fabric that you're binding. If your fabric doesn't stretch much, then you want to cut off only an inch from the binding strip instead. Take the binding strip and divide it into four equal parts using notches. I am also doing the same thing on the neckline of my garment here. Next, you're going to pin the notches that are on the binding strip to the notches that are on the garment that you're working on. The right side of the binding strip should be on the wrong side of the neckline, hem, or armhole. So turn the garment right side out in order to do this. Now you're going to sew the binding strip to the garment and stretch it to meet the fabric just like you would when sewing elastic. Sew with a half inch seam allowance. You don't want to have to stretch your binding strip too much. You want it to just stretch 
slightly just a little bit because if it stretches too much then you're going to end up with a scrunchy neckline and that's not what we want when you get back to where you started back stitch and then cut the thread if you have a serger use it to finish this area because it will make the next step much easier but this is completely optional next fold the binding fabric a half of an inch towards the allowance then fold it again in order to cover the stitching pin the binding fabric all around the area that you're binding like this. Top stitch at the edge of the fold and stretch it while you sew to maintain the stretch. When you get back to where you started, back stitch and cut the thread. I'm glad that this came out this way because I wanted to show you guys that if you end up seeing any threads showing like this, you can easily take them out using your seam ripper. It really does help to use a stitch length of five to begin with, so that way your stitches are longer and therefore easy to remove. If you want your binding strip to be thinner than this, Cut the fabric one and a half inches wide instead of two inches and sew with a quarter inch allowance when adding the binding strip to the garment. I hope this video has been helpful. Next, I'm going to be posting a tutorial on how to sew an off the shoulder top that you can use this finish on.